it may look and feel like magical internet money. But the truth is that cryptocurrency is personal property. At least that's the statement from the United States Internal Revenue Service. Well, with so many questions surrounding crypto and taxes, we thought we'd invite a certified public accountant to the show. While no one likes to think about paying taxes, we're here to help you stay legit by bringing you someone who has a handle on it. Besides, there's no tax for listening to this show. It's free. So come along and discover what you need to know on episode number 73 of the Bad Crypto Podcast. Five, four, three, two, one, two, ignition. Who's bad? Hi, it's Keith from Belgium. I really just want to say that I love your show and also other only thing I wanted to say was magical internet. Google in all the things so you don't have to, so that your ears can be paying attention to all the badness coming out of our mouths. It is the Bad Crypto Podcast. You got a couple authors here, Joel Com and Travis Wright better known as the Crypto Clowns, and welcome to the show. We're glad you're here. You know, Joel, I prefer to be called a blockchain blockhead. Um, this Crypto clown stuff, I, I ain't having it. Clowns are scary, kind of like, like taxes. Yeah, taxes are scary, and there are so many questions from our listeners about taxes. We get them via voicemail. We get them via email, via the contact form on the Facebook page, all kinds of discussion. And you're going to hear in our interview today uh, the origin story of how I met Aaron Schneider, the certified public accountant who is really dug in deep. Him and his um, comrades in CPA-ness are really trying to understand something that most of the accounting world really doesn't have a handle on. And today, today, they're going to get the answers. You know, if you Google, you know, how to do your taxes, cryptocurrency stuff, what pops up are a lot of articles. And what pops up within those different articles is there's a whole lot of different, you know, stories coming through. Some will say this, some will say that. And so it's kind of murky. And if you imagine how many different CPAs out there probably have no clue. And, you know, for the, for the IRS folks out there who it's their job to understand this stuff, it's got to be murky for them too, because there's so much stuff going on. It's a, it's a very complex thing. I mean, Joel and I, we just got going on this cryptocurrency thing about six months ago, really. And so like we don't have it figured out. And, and there's so many people asking us about, well, what do you do with this? How does this work? We don't know. And so we wanted to bring in an expert to talk about that particular topic. And we're going to get to that. Quick shout out to all of you, our listeners. Thank you as our audience is multiplying faster than bunny rabbits. Uh, Y'all must be getting busy out there. So thanks for that as you're spawning new citizens of the Republic of Bad Cryptopia. This is how we grow the Republic. Y'all are out there having babies, I guess. They They're love the Bitcoin. Those babies do. Ba bit baby Bitcoin. Baby coin. Hmm. That's something. It probably will be something. Now that you just said it, somebody was like, oh, I thought of it. That's a great one, too. I'm going to go to Wave Platform. Just give us some tokens. Just give us some tokens. I still don't know what to do with my Joel coin. You know, I created a million of them. Yeah, how are you going to claim that platform. on the taxes? What, how much is your Joel coin worth? What, what, what do we got to do with our bad coin? It's, I, it's worthless, so there's nothing worth to nothing. claim. Yeah. But – you might have something to claim if you participate in ICOs. And one way that some of you will be able to do that is with the Zilla app. Maybe it's in the app store by now. Maybe not. I don't know. Let us know if you see it out there because Apple is being really slow. They're just, I think they get a lot of apps and it just takes time, especially to get a new one in there. But the website is zla.io forward slash bad. And this is where you're going to be able to participate in the ICO marketplace. Check out the latest ICOs that are in the app and, and do your due diligence on them, decide if you like them. And in some places of the world, you'll be able to invest in them. And eventually there will be wallet functionality 
in the Zilla app as well. It's going to be pretty cool. At least that's what we're told by Abasa Phillips, the creator of the Zilla app. And we thank them for being our sponsor this month. The website is zla.io forward slash bad. And one thing that we always, you know, talk about is on this really helps you do your due diligence. And as we always speak, you want to do due diligence. You said do do. I know. Speaking of that, let's talk about taxes. <laughs> Add crypto voicemail. You have one new message. Hi, bad crypto dudes. Uh, my name is Jody Coyote, aka Crypto Coyote. Uh, I just wanted to say you guys are awesome. I jumped into the crypto black hole vortex uh, in um, in May of 2017, and I found your podcast soon after you started, and it was awesome. And uh, I have to say, I started my own Crypto Basics video blog, and I broke in the song a couple of times, and now I get it. I totally get it. So um, I'm sorry if I was like, why are they singing so much? Uh, I do actually like it a little. Um, <laughs> but you guys are awesome. Let me tell you how it will be, Travis. There's one for you, 19 for me, because I'm the tax man. Yeah, I'm the tax man. The classic Beatles song was correct, what, 40 some odd years ago. The tax man cometh. And probably amongst the questions that we get more than others these days is how are we affected in the crypto world in the tax realm? And uh, I would love to say, hey, you can choose not to pay them if you don't want to, but that would be bad advice. <laughs> that is right, because the IRS, you know, they are attached to the Federal Reserve and all that good stuff. And so, you know, as uh, you know, we got to pay our taxes at this point, unless Trump, you know, decides to change it up and, and uh, we don't have to worry about that IRS shithole anymore. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, this is um, definitely a topic that a lot of people are interested in, and so we are finally going to address it. Um, and of course, those of you that are United States citizens, you know, it's about half of our audience. It's particularly relevant to you. But those of you that are from other nations of the world, you're probably going to learn a thing or two as well as some of the same rules may apply in your country of origin. So our guest is, surprise, a certified public accountant. His name is Aaron Schneider. His website is Crypto CPA. Dot tax, and he has come into the vortex known as the Bad Crypto uh, Podcast. Welcome, Aaron. Hey, thanks for having me. Absolutely, thanks for uh, drumming up the courage to come here and and spend some time with us. And I just got I got to tell a really brief story because how we met is is really funny. Um, you are active. You've been a listener to the show, and you're very active in the Bad Crypto Mastermind, which. All of you should be in the Bad Crypto Mastermind because it is highly engaging and people are talking cryptos all the time. Badcode.in forward slash mastermind is the place to go. And you had commented on a tax question a couple months ago. And I thought, oh, here's somebody who might know a little something, who's a CPA, might know, you know, some answers to questions about taxes and crypto. And I moused over and clicked on your profile and immediately I saw Thomas Shattig CPA, Edmond, Oklahoma. And I went, I, I, I did one of those double takes because I used to live in Edmond, Oklahoma, and Tom Shattig was my CPA uh. until about 2007. Uh, and turns out that you have been working with my old CPA uh, ever since I left. And you said that he mentioned something to you about one of his former clients. Yeah, uh, I had always heard, uh, you know, I, you were referenced as this entrepreneurial client. And I remember after you messaged me or, you, you know, we talked, I started thinking back and I was like, I remember this, them telling me about this client with this, with this fart app idea. <laughs> and so I, I looked at your LinkedIn profile. I was like, that's the guy. How funny. And you'd been <laughs> listening to the show and you didn't, you, we hadn't, hadn't made that connection. <laughs> Small world. 
Well, thanks for coming on. And we need your help to help bring sanity and clarity to this whole crypto realm. I will do my best. Good stuff. Nah. Yeah, it's one of those things where there's a lot of people who are curious about how it all works. There's a lot of people are a lot of different rumors that are going around. There's a lot of people who are stating emphatically things are a certain way. And there are others saying that they are another way. And so it's an interesting challenge to figure out, well, what's the actual way? So we're glad that we have somebody on the show who can be a Sherpa to help us guide us up the Himalaya mountains of Texas. Yeah. So, so Sherpa us, tell us, you know, what is the lay of the land? Give us a, a bird's eye view of how we need to be looking at our gains and our losses tax wise. Sure. And so, like you said, this is, so I only deal in U S tax. Uh, so I can't speak for any other countries or, you know, I don't know anything about Korean tax or Zimbabwe tax. Okay. Uh, so those of you in Zimbabwe, sorry, you're out of luck. Maybe it's similar though. We'll see. It might be. (laughs) <laughs> so, um, and another disclaimer, you know, I, I know you guys do your financial advice disclaimer. Did you already that we are not financial advisors that, yeah, <laughs> that one. Yeah. Per, uh, Travis, we are not financial advisors in case what? you didn't know. What? <laughs> when did this happen? I thought we were Shocker. financial advisors. You know, maybe our next uh, song should be the we are not financial advisors song. Maybe we can, uh, we can get Aaron to auto tune. <laughs> <laughs> So there, there's the disclaimer. You are, however, a certified public accountant. You are I am, but I do have to put out there that, um, so this isn't specific tax advice to anyone specifically. And so it's just a general explanation of general tax principles based on my understanding of the tax law. And so if, if anyone does have a specific situation, uh, I encourage them to con- either shoot me a message or contact a CPA directly. Okay. Disclaimer issued in in the terms of service of listening to this podcast. um, By continuing to listen, you have acknowledged that you understand everything that Aaron has said and uh, don't sue him or (laughs) us or anybody. Take responsibility for your own stuff. You know, people are getting a lot more concerned about taxes and and they should be. I'm, I'm I definitely start looking in the forums and I'm seeing people message, you know, post messages quite a bit. And, and that's good. Um, I think it's safe to say that crypto is, you know, it's in the spotlight now. We're seeing it a lot more in our news feeds. And, you know, with the market cap showing no signs of slowing down, the IRS is just going to get more and more determined to find ways to enforce compliance. Um, you know, there's a lot of money floating around and they're going to do what they can to get it. So I guess the best first question then would be, uh, you know, is is crypto taxable? Yeah. So it really, the answer is it depends. There's going to be a lot of different situations that may or may not be taxable. Uh, in terms of what the IRS has put out there, they've, they've put some guidance out. If anybody wants to actually see the paper, uh, they can look up, it's called 20, uh, 2014-21 or yeah, 2014-21. And basically their stance is, is I know I, I prefer has- the sequel. I like 2014-22. I thought that was a better read. <laughs> And so basically their stance is, is, you know, while it does have the word currency in it, they don't view it as currency. They view it as property. And so normal property transaction rules will apply. And so what does that mean? So if you think about like when you buy, let's say you buy some land, there's some terms that we need to that we need to all understand and get on the same page with. So let's say you buy some land and you buy it for ten thousand dollars. So important word is going to be your basis. That is your what you put into the land. So your basis in that land was $10,000. And let's say later you sell that land for $15,000. So the next word that you need to know is proceeds. Your proceeds is $15,000. So those two words, proceeds minus basis will get you to your gain or loss. And so when we start thinking about how we think about our crypto transactions, that's what we need to be thinking about in terms of proceeds and basis. Okay, so the the next big question that we hear from people, and you know, early on in the show, uh, we gave if we were financial advisors, you would say that this wasn't the best advice. But since I said, hey, I heard it from a friend who heard it from a friend who heard you weren't paying your taxes, then it doesn't it doesn't count. But right. what we were, you know, the information we were given is that if you sell 
Bitcoin into another currency or any currency into another that those aren't taxable, that it's only taxable once you sell to dirty fiat. Sorry if that makes, you know, fiat currency crypto furious. I'm a little crypto furious. <laughs> I thought it might. But it turns out that's not the right interpretation, is it, Aaron? Right. A lot of people have been just trying to defer to, to, to not pay their taxes as long as possible by thinking that as long as I don't convert it, convert it back to fiat, I'm good, which is not the case. Let's go through a couple situations of what are taxable and what are not taxable. So purely just holding crypto and you get to the end of the year and you haven't done anything with it, that's not a taxable event. You you have un, you may have unrealized gains, but you haven't realized them. So that's Aaron, the important thing to understand. Aaron, we don't yes, hold we don't hold crypto. <laughs> we hodl. Nobody holds it. We hodl here. It's true. That is that is unacceptable. <laughs> the IRS hasn't put hodling in their official. <laughs> yet, so maybe they will. Could you see that <laughs> as a line item? How much are you hodling? <laughs> <laughs> and so the next situation that I, that I think is important is transferring between wallets. Not taxable. You're just you know that's just moving money around from one account to another. Well, couldn't I say, I'm moving this Bitcoin to Ethereum? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> In that case, yeah, you are changing the nature of your your what you're holding. Well, what's interesting about this is that, you know, there's a great article that was actually talking about how in 2016, only 802 people told the IRS about Bitcoin. Right. Oh, yeah. And I think I think that was actually covering a couple year period. Right. Which yes. is even even crazier. Right. So now, you know, since crypto, crypto at that time, you know, went from $13 to about $1,200 during those particular times and 802 individuals filed that in there. And we all want to be legit. We want to let people know. Actually, it was in 2013, 807 people uh, uh, reported a transaction. Uh, in 2014, 893 individuals did that. And in 2015, 802 individuals reported a transaction. So, you know, less people in 2015. <laughs> you know, there was way more people in 2015 that were in crypto, and but less people did it than, than they did in 2013. And I don't know what they did in 2016 because that statistics are not out. So that's that's a problem. So how how are the IRS going to be able to track how like, oh, I went to this and then the Monero and then Monero and I got some of this and then I switched out on that and I bought some VeChain and then I got some VeChain and I sold some of that to Bitcoin and then I bought some of that. How are they going to be able to track that whole thing? Because it's hard for people to even track it on their own. Yeah, and I totally get what you're saying. And I, I, I'll say that I do not envy anybody at the IRS that is being tasked with the challenge of trying to figure out how to enforce compliance. You know, it's, I think it's reasonable to say that it's going to be a mess for a little while. That being said, though, I definitely encourage people to report properly. And don't, I, I would stress not to get try to get cute with the IRS. Because um, one thing to remember, and I, and I see this in the, in the forums, and I see comments of, you know, when we start talking about taxes, I see people say like, oh, what crypto? And they, 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 you know, they're going to act like they don't have any crypto. Uh, just keep in mind that for fraud, there is no statute of limitations. So they can go, you know, they can go back as far as they want to go if they do start finding a way to enforce compliance. I have a question then about this, because so in 2010, I mined some Bitcoin and I uh, solved the block and I got 50 Bitcoin. And then I also did one of those uh, Bitcoin faucets, which gave me five Bitcoin for free. So I had a total of 55 Bitcoin and then, but it wasn't worth anything at the time. And then my computer crashed and now I've lost 55 Bitcoin, right? I mean, I literally don't have access to it. I can't get it. And now that 55 Bitcoin is worth, you know, several hundred thousand dollars. And that's a huge loss that I've lost that, that those potential Bitcoins, I, maybe I could find them if I go to the dumpster and go grab them get that computer but what about what about losses and how what's the statute of limitations on carrying over losses so and i guess for off the air did you end up ever doing anything with that did i end up ever doing anything meaning uh, with with your your loss did you ever end up reporting or anything like that i've not reported it yet no okay. because at the time i really hadn't thought about it until we started doing yeah. the show and i'm like holy shit that's a lot yeah that's a really good question 
and it's really relevant, I'm sure, to a lot of people. It, it is going to that would be a little bit more of a specific situation uh, that's going to have some nuances that that you may have different answers. And especially even with the changing tax laws, that answer may change. Yeah, because I lost a million Bitcoin. Yeah, that's the ticket. Right. A million and, Bitcoin. They're gone. And yeah, that's another factor is proving that you had them and proving that they're lost. <laughs> Yeah, well, he's he's said it on the show about fifty times. So there's <laughs> that's proof. <laughs> there's the proof right sad. there. Sad. Well, I'm sad. That's proof. It gets even more confusing when you know many of the exchanges, uh, Bitrix, Poloniex, uh, Coinbase. You know they have reporting you can download, but a lot of people are using exchanges such as Ether Delta that there's no reporting, there's no tracking. People are swapping out tokens to Ethereum and then sending them to another token and then to another exchange. And how do you, how can you possibly, and, and compound that with when you do a sale that it sells in little bits, right? It might sell, you might sell 2000 tokens um, and put a price on it, but it'll sell 400 of them at this price and the next 300 at that price. How, how, how? that's right. my question, how? And that's something I've seen, you know, I, when I got into this and I started thinking about it and I, I started using a spreadsheet and I very quickly started realizing, oh my God, this is going to get a little out of hand. This is going to be really difficult to track. So I, I use specific software for cryptocurrency because one of the big things that's going on behind the scenes is, is tracking your basis. And that's something that either you need to be really good at Excel or you got to understand that you're not going to be tracking your basis correctly. And just to give you an example, let's say you bought one Bitcoin a year ago for $1,000. You bought one Bitcoin six months ago for $5,000. And you bought a Bitcoin last month for $17,000. So in total, you've got three Bitcoin, right? So let's say you sell one of your Bitcoin and you sell it for $15,000. Well, what's, what's your gain or loss there? It depends on what Bitcoin it was that you were selling. Did you sell the one from back in January of last year? Did you sell the one from last month? Huh. So you could either. That's have impossible 14... to figure out, though, because it all joins into one number. There's not like a Bitcoin has a, you know, if it's a partial of a Bitcoin, basically just joins back in and you have this much Bitcoin, not that you have this specific amount of Bitcoin and this Bitcoin is Bitcoin A, this is Bitcoin B, it's all in one grouping of Bitcoin. And like if I, you know, buy a little bit of Bitcoin here, a little bit of Bitcoin there, there's no differentiation. There's no there's no serial number on those particular digits. It all comes in and now we have Bitcoin. We don't have specific Right. And that's and that's where it gets really messy with the spreadsheet because what's actually going on behind the scenes, and, and that's why I, I encourage people to use any kind of uh, software, is you've got these lots. And so you've bought, you bought X amount at this price and you've got another amount at this price. And then as you sell them, you'll start selling off the, the ones that you sold at this price and you'll start selling off different ones. So it, I, I don't want to try to do it in Excel because it, it'll get really complicated. And that's I'm just so confused. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well what about crypto versus like some of these utility tokens? And even though some of these utility tokens are are worth, you know, fiat currency, they have a value, they aren't necessarily currency. Are they viewed the same as a property? And then what's the difference between Bitcoin versus power ledger token or versus some of these other tokens? I mean, are there different rules based on those different class of assets? No, I, I would say uh, that it's still you're still buying and selling property. So regardless of, of whether it's what, what type of token it is, you've still got a taxable transaction and, and you've got to determine, you know, if you're going from one crypto to another crypto, you've got to determine the, the fair market value of the new crypto that becomes your proceeds. And so you've got to use that. You've got to you've got to translate that into U.S. dollars and use that as your proceeds to determine your gains and losses. Then it get let, let's add another layer to this. The price of Bitcoin is constantly changing, as is every other currency. So when you sell something back in the Bitcoin, you have to at that very moment know what that is worth in U.S. dollars because your point eight nine five six three two Bitcoin might be worth you know something at one moment, and then five minutes later it's gone up or down. Right, and this this then 
presents us with the challenge of what's going to, this is why tax season is going to be messy. One thing that I, you know, I've been talking to people on both sides of the aisle. I've been talking to the investors, but I've also been talking to CPAs. And I think there's a little bit of a disconnect between people's expectations on, on the other party. So, you know, I talk to investors and, and I, I see them commonly just saying, oh, I'm going to just pass this to my CPA. And one thing I don't, I think people don't really realize is not a whole lot of CPAs are, are super familiar with crypto. And depending on how tech forward your part of the country is, they've maybe never even heard of cryptocurrency or Bitcoin. And so on the CPA side, I think CPAs are kind of under the impression that they're going to get presented with some clean reports that are going to be, that are actually going to spell out, you know, proceeds basis and gains and losses. You know, they're ah. accustomed Ah. They're they're accustomed to getting Vanguard 1099s that are just, you know, tell them what their short and long term capital gains are. So what advice do you have for them? Because, I mean, there's a lot. I you know what? And it's like I have a a, um, a CPA in my hometown and uh, he's a good friend of the family. And he literally is just like this cryptocurrency. He like he has he's old school. He has no desire and wanting to learn about it. He thinks it's a bubble and a scam. And like there's going to be a whole lot of CPAs that are going to become irrelevant if they don't figure this out. One hundred percent agree. I've, I've been uh, talking to the. AICPA, uh, which is the American Institute of CPAs, trying to put the word out a little bit more to get tax tax practitioners to, uh, at, at the very least, you know, while they may not believe in Bitcoin or or any cryptocurrency, they need to at least understand that it's here to stay, and they need to be familiar with it enough to be able to help their clients when it comes to tax time. I mean, yeah, there's more uh, people on Coinbase than there are on like Morgan Stanley. I mean, yeah, and that's <laughs> that's going to be the future of it. That what was the report that millennials are more comfortable with the idea of investing in cryptocurrency than they right. are with stocks? Right. I mean, this is where we're headed. This is going to be a cluster. Let's just call it what it is. And of course, you know, you, your advice is that everybody pay their taxes and I'm going to concur with that. And I'm going to, you know, do likewise to the best of my ability to try to get all my reporting together. Um, do you have a newsletter that you're going to offer so that people can, um, you know, keep up with the latest? Yeah, I've got a small group that I work with and we're we're, we're going to be trying to put out as much information as we can. So if anybody's interested and wants to sign up for it, then just go to cryptocpa.tax, not .com, cryptocpa.tax, and sign up for the newsletter there. Yeah, don't go to cryptocpa.com. Those guys could suck. We we don't know for sure. I don't even know who they are. I don't even Those know if there's guys, a site. We hate them there's no website there, but it's okay. available for $15,000 if anybody okay. wants to buy it. Okay, cryptocpa.tax is, uh, is Aaron's site, and I see that there's a newsletter sign up there. So I recommend that everybody do that. Now, when we were talking offline, Aaron, you recommended a website for tracking all my coins, which incidentally happens to be called cointracking.info. Talk about that and how it works. Yeah. So, you know, as I got, if I, as I started doing my own tracking of my own coins and, and quickly realized that a spreadsheet wasn't going to cut it, I started looking at software. Um, so I found cointracking.info and I've, I've started, you know, I finally, I've gotten all of my 2017 up to date and I'm, you know, all the balances are right and everything's good. And, and I'm, I'm happy with the software and the way it works, the way that it calculates the basis and the tax reports that I can run, I can run different reports, whether I'm using LIFO, last in, first out, or FIFO, first in, first out, as my basis. And that'll generate you know different gains and losses. So I, I'm really happy with the software. And so I, I reached out to them, and they've given me a referral link. So any listeners that want to sign up for that will get a 10% discount on their subscription. Why don't we go ahead and we'll set up a short link for that. You'll give us the URL. So, but for you guys to go uh, directly there, go to badco.in forward slash track, T-R-A-C-K. And that will take you directly to uh, coin tracking through Aaron's link. And um, I'm, I'm starting to play around with it here to upload my stuff because uh, Aaron's helping me walk through my tax issues for the year. Uh, Aaron, what about... Um, Coinbase, right? There was some news several months back that Coinbase gave up information of what, 14,000 accounts that were high volume accounts? 
Yeah, I mean, the IRS is going to start, they're starting to really look into it. And then uh, obviously, uh, and I didn't they originally request more information? I think there was a couple back and forths, and that's what they ultimately settled on. Yeah, uh, they want they wanted like everything. I think they wanted anybody over a certain dollar amount, and right. they settled on just a few. Which you know, the the whole Big Brother thing is a little little creepy, right? Because sure. uh, it was handed over, right? As to how far that's going to go, uh, you know, I have no idea. Um, it's reasonable that if we keep seeing this market cap go up and up in which all of us expect it to is that the IRS is going to keep pushing harder and harder to get more information. Yeah. Now I have a question about this because there was a, the, there was this, you know, the, the 1031 tax free exchange, which, you know, since yeah. crypto is viewed as property and not currency, they, that, that this rule had gone into play up until December 31st, 2017, I believe. But now I guess they say that, cryptocurrency uh, does not apply to that swappable exchange. So originally, I guess with the 1031 exchange, you could swap one kind of business or investment asset for another. Now, does that apply to atomic swaps down the road? Because these are going to become way more prevalent where like Litecoin can immediately be exchanged to Bitcoin where it's not actually going through a cryptocurrency exchange. It's just immediately being converted. Do we have any clarity on that or this? Because this is really murky. Yeah. And as specifically atomic swaps, and, I, and I'm not 100 percent familiar with atomic swaps, but and so I don't know what the, the ruling on that's going to be. I can say and, and I'm glad you brought up 1031 like kind exchanges, you know, with the new tax law that came out in just a just a few weeks ago, they've specifically, you know, they stated specifically that like kind exchanges will now only apply to real property. And so that effectively eliminates cryptocurrency from like kind exchange. Now, there's been a little bit of misconception as to what what the impact of that is prior to 2018. I know a lot of people, you know, they think, okay, well, I can't do a like kind exchange in 2018, but I'm going to go ahead and do it in 2017. Uh, I do want to say that pretty much every CPA that that I know that is involved in crypto. Uh, will not take the stance that you crypto to crypto does qualify for like kind exchange. Well, I just I can't imagine being the agent that has to audit a high activity account. I just I, I see lots of frustration. I mean, because ultimately, like, let, let's say somebody didn't pay. Um, mm -hmm. And certainly I'm not recommending that at all. And then uh, they get audited. Uh, then w they they're just responsible for giving documentation to the IRS, right? The IRS has to go through it and figure it out. Well, and no, that's uh, the burden is definitely going to be on the taxpayer to prove to them that you know you're taking a certain stance whenever you you file your tax return. And right. and granted, I'm not an IRS auditor, so I'm I'm not familiar with exactly how the pro how you know the ins and outs of their work. But I do know that the burden is definitely going to fall on you to say, hey, here's my documentation. Here's the proof and have that. Right, even even handing all that over to them, uh, what I'm saying, I'm saying even if you have everything printed out, uh, you know, we're not talking fiat dollars here. We're talking right. the moving target of crypto from one crypto to another and prices going up and down on a regular basis. It's not like, you know, getting a report from Fidelity that says, well, I sold this stock at this price. Here's what it was worth. And then I bought this with it. Right. Uh, this is a whole new world. And I even if they're looking at it, I think they're going to look at it cross side and go, what am I looking at? And and now there is something to say about the openness of the blockchain. You know, it's it's not entirely, you know, aside from Monero and any of the other privacy coins, you know, there you can see the transactions that are happening. And so I I would while I'm not an IT specialist, uh, it'll be interesting to see if there's anything that develops in that on that side that they do any kind of tracking just on the open side, the, the public side of the blockchain. What do you think would be a better solution? I mean, what what would make what would make this easy? I mean, wouldn't it be like how much crypto do you have at the end of the year? How much have you sold into fiat? Pay taxes on that. I mean, there, there has to be something. And I know 
that there are discussions, you know, in Congress and there are some, you know, politicians who are in senators who are looking at this and trying to find that best case scenario, because this is going to be a, a complete nightmare for some of these IRS folks. And I feel for them who are going to have to go through and 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 try to make sense of some of this stuff because it's such a new space and a lot of people you know are not going to have great records they sometimes you have uh, an 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 address that is used one time and then it's gone you know i mean like i mean so the the tracking from from the cryptocurrency investors perspective and the tracking from the irs perspective they're they're they have different goals but there's it's going to be so difficult is there any idea or have you heard of any sort of plan or anyone who's come out and said here's how we need to simplify this i mean what where should it go you know i i not really haven't heard anything and I, like i said i don't envy those that have to figure it out fortunately as a tax practitioner i'm you know after they figure it out just let us know so that we can you know figure out how to stay compliant Maybe have the exchanges take a piece of the of the of the transaction for taxes or something. I mean, it's I, almost. I mean, but you've got exchanges that are outside of you know U.S. jurisdiction. I don't know how they're gonna. You know, you've got part of your exchanges in the U.S., part that aren't, and then we're gonna have decentralized exchanges. And prices aren't the same on all those exchanges. I mean, it's not like the stock market where they have that rule where all the stock prices on all the exchanges have to match up and be the exactly the same. I mean, there's in crypto, they all have different exchanges. They're all different prices. Like if I want to go buy Bitcoin and Binance, that's a much different price than it is on BitThumb over in Korea. And so it's just, there's so much discrepancy in all of this stuff. It's just really, really challenging. Now I would say with this, if you use software and those softwares will hook into the, their APIs should Again, I'm not a developer, but they should connect into those exchanges and be able to pull prices. So, again, another vote for using tax software would be that you don't have to determine any of these prices because they will automatically calculate those for you. Well, just like crypto and blockchain is a brave new world and, you know, we're looking at new ways of transacting, new ways of managing contracts. The IRS is going to have to look at this in a new way. They can't apply the same old formula and expect that it's going to be simple enough for, you know, the taxpayer to work through this. And I personally, just as a layperson, I think this is going to take years for them to sort through this because the government tends to move kind of slow. And I agree. Uh, I would definitely still do everything you can to stay compliant now. I think that will pay dividends down the road by getting every all your ducks in a line. And, and I support this message. Fully, just to be clear, I would, you know, neither Travis or I would suggest that anybody um, do anything to avoid paying what is legally due. And so uh, any other thoughts you have for us, Aaron? Yeah, there are a couple other uh, situations that I did want to point out that just to get people thinking about, you know, things that might be taxable, you know, with the I I assume the crypto kitties phase has uh, fad has died down a little bit. But, you know, keep in mind that when you when you make a purchase with something, you're effectively selling your Bitcoin or selling your cryptocurrency and you're purchasing something. And so that then triggers a taxable transaction. It's not like money. You know, think of it. You've got this property and you're selling it for money and then you're using that money to buy something else. I'm actually speechless because <laughs> I'm, I'm just I'm thinking uh, a dang kitty um, just became a taxable event. Yeah. So you got to really think about how how much you want that kitty. Travis, so along with losing your Bitcoin, you know, you got to figure out if you can write off your oh lost God. kitties. Yeah, I lost there. like six kitties. Bad crypto Travis is oh, out there and now man. now now he's a burden on somebody else in society and might be your write off. <laughs> <laughs> like so what are your write offs this year? Well, I you know, I got these crypto kitties and, and I, you're just these CPAs are going to look at us like we're mentally handicapped. Right. <laughs> yeah, if you if you say to your your CPA that you had a a, a Gen 0 crypto kitty, he's probably going to be Yeah. <laughs> clueless about what you're wow. talking about. He's probably going to say, maybe you need a new CPA. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, a, couple, a couple other things that I've seen in, in the message group is, you know, there are businesses out there that are wanting to accept crypto as payment. And, and I think that's great. 
Uh, you know, you see signs. Um, I have actually started to see some windows that have stickers that say we proudly accept you know, Bitcoin or Litecoin. One thing to keep in mind for anybody that is wanting to do that with their business, it, it's going to make your accounting a little bit more complex because you're receiving property. You're not receiving money. You're receiving property. And so that property, you've got to determine what is your income whenever you receive it is the fair market value when you receive it. So that's one number that you've got to know. But then you have this property that has basis. And so moving forward, when you eventually sell that property, you've got a gain or loss that you've got to figure out. So just something to keep in mind is your, your bookkeeping is now more complex by accepting crypto. This is not easy, folks. But I mean, if, if you can't handle this, then you don't deserve those sweet, sweet crypto gains, right? <laughs> All right, uh, Aaron, uh, I have a feeling you have a final thought for us. What is it? Yeah, absolutely. One last thing is please be kind to your CPA come tax season. <laughs> Do not wait until the last minute to dump this on him, him or her. April 15th. Yeah. Oh, here's my crypto. <laughs> he, he, he or she will likely just extend you and try to figure it out this summer. He or she will likely extend you and then try to pawn you off on another account. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, I wonder if, you know, the H&R blocks and all that TurboTax and all of those type of softwares, I mean, are those updated enough to be able to handle uh, this type of information yet? Is it, Do you have any ideas on that? Uh <laughs> my assumption is no, but I mean, deep down, it really, I mean, any of the, any of the softwares are just looking for proceeds, uh, basis in us dollars. And so that's up to you to like translate all of that into us dollars. I don't see any of the, the, the softwares getting to a point where they, they accept, you know, they're, they're looking for numbers that are in crypto numbers. Any idea how many CPAs there are in the United States? You know, I don't know. Uh, well, it's, you know, it's my uneducated guess that fewer than 1% of American CPAs are prepared to deal with this in any respect, right? Even in the most basic, would you say that that's probably a, a conservative estimate? I, I definitely think that this tax season is going to be a surprise. I mean, and who knows? We'll see how, how many people actually, you know, based on the forums that I see that I read, uh, people are concerned about it. So my assumption is that people will be trying to, you know, report their transactions. Uh, I, th I think a lot of CPAs are just going to be, it's going to be a surprise, a shock. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. They're going to get crash courses and right. uh, they're going to need help. And uh, it's great for, you know, people like you who are adventuring out and taking this on in the group that you're in to learn. Uh, so Aaron Schneider, CPA, the website is crypto CPA dot tax recommend that citizens of the Republic of Bed Cryptopia, go sign up for the newsletter that he and um, his group of CPAs are putting together and maybe get your questions answered. And also, um, he is uh, part of the community in the Bad Crypto Mastermind. So if you ask your tax questions in there, let's try not to have, you know, a zillion posts asking tax questions in there because sometimes that happens after an episode, we get a bunch of posts. Um, but like look for the one or use the search function, search for tax. And you're likely to see the posts where people have asked questions and answers already being put out there. And that would help us to keep the group more streamlined and uncluttered. And that works really so, well too. That search thing. I use that all the time to try to find certain ones. I, I would say this for you, Aaron, since there are so many CPAs, and not a lot of them know much about that. That seems to me to be a really good opportunity for you to be a teacher of them once you know more about this, because that's going to be an ongoing problem. And there is no Sherpa for those CPAs out there who do not understand this stuff yet. So you could be the one. You could be Neo. <laughs> is he I'm Neo? <laughs> <laughs> I'm definitely trying to reach out to CPAs and spread the word. Hey, Travis, have you used the search form to look for your crypto kitties? Yeah, they're not there. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks again, Aaron. Appreciate it. CryptoCPA.tax is the website, and uh, we appreciate you. Hey, thanks for having me. April 15th isn't that far off, Travis. And people who did transactions in the previous year are going to want to get busy and making sure that they are on track with their coin tracking. 
Yeah, you know, he's full of a lot of great information. And, you know, there you can tell there's groups forming with these CPAs trying to figure out how this whole space works. And, you know, nobody's really sure on this. And so the, the thing is, is just do your best. You know, coin tracking is one of those tools that will help you pull in all your trades from those different uh, from those different um, exchanges. And it, it may not be perfect, but do the best you can. You got to be smart about it and don't be afraid of the crypto gains. Uh, you know, so th- it's almost like, it, it, oh, well, every little thing is, 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 uh, every transaction is super heavily taxed. Well, like that's going to dis- destroy incentive to want to keep, you know, the thing going. If everything's pulled out, it's almost, there's, hopefully they figure out something that makes sense and makes it, uh, simplifies it because it seems like it's going to get really difficult. Here's what I'm super grateful for that we have a community of people that it's attracting people like Aaron. I mean, we wouldn't have discovered him had he not been in the bad crypto mastermind. And do you know, Travis, we have over 5,000 members in that Facebook group now. And if you guys aren't there, come on in. The water's fine. Badco.in forward slash mastermind is how you join. Answer a few questions. And we say in the questions, you have to answer them if you want in. And uh, Travis, I don't know about you, but if they don't answer them, I hit decline. I hit decline all. Yeah. And another thing about, you know, having Aaron on the show, which him being a fan and he's listened to a lot of episodes, he got distracted a few times during the interview because he was like, oh, it's like I, I thought I was listening to the show right. when I was hearing you guys talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he said that after we stopped recording that he had these, these little moments of thinking he was listening to the episode because he's so used to us talking. Uh, and, and it's really great getting messages from those of you who have been with us from the beginning. It has been six months, Travis. People have been listening to our show, Joel, for six months. And I know I've mentioned it a few times during the, all the shows that we've done is that one of my goals starting out, I think it was back in the year 2000 or something, was like somehow in some way inspire people and help create at least a thousand millionaires. Like I would love to help create a thousand millionaires and all the great impact that could happen with all these people having more money to be able to go do good stuff out in the world. Right. And so really when it's all said and done is I hope I help a lot of people have to pay more taxes. Can't believe people listen to us. You know what? It's like my kids, they don't listen to me. Uh, you know, it's like a lot of my employees, they don't always listen, to but people on this podcast, they listen to me. So that's why I love you all so very much. We do. So as you're out there listening, we hope that you have some laughs. We hope that you learn some stuff. Uh, we hope that you stay a part of this community and drag some others in as well because we love building up this community and uh, most of all make sure that whatever you do wherever you go and whoever you're with and whatever you eat and whatever you smell that all of your senses know how to stay bad who's bad The Bad Crypto Podcast is a production of Bad Crypto LLC. The content of the show, the videos, and the website is provided for educational, informational, and entertainment purposes only. It's not intended to be and does not constitute financial, investment, or trading advice of any kind. You shouldn't make any decisions as to finances, investing, trading, or anything else based on this information without undertaking independent due diligence and consultation with a professional financial advisor. Please understand that the trading of Bitcoin's and alternative cryptocurrencies have potential risks involved. Anyone wishing to invest in any of the currencies or tokens mentioned on this podcast should first seek their own independent professional financial advisor.